Welcome back to another episode of the Golf Industry Roundtable. I'm Kyle Taylor. He's Rob Hoffman, and we are pleasure or delighted to have you guys back. Uh, I think this is show 18. 18. Now, a GIR 18 uh, would be a hell of a golf hole. <laughs> That's right. I didn't even think about that. I'm thinking like we can register for the draft. We can uh, used to be in New York uh, story. My mom used to tell me stories. I don't know. She's not going to like it. Me putting this out there. Um, growing up in Pennsylvania, the legal drinking age in New York used to be 18. So when she was in college at Clarion, uh, I think it was Clarion College at the time, but Clarion University in Pennsylvania, it was maybe an hour and a half, two hours to the New York border. That's what they do up to the border to uh, do a little bit of whatever. So you're welcome, yeah. Mom, there. <laughs> if you're listening to this episode of me here. So. Well, uh, speaking of Mom, we're, we're set to talk about girl power, right? We the are. The of women on the game of golf? We are. We have a very interesting guest. Uh, she's very well known now for what she's done for women in golf. But she's got an interesting pedigree in the golf industry as well, one that I was not fully aware of before we kind of came into this episode. Uh, Elisa Gade, Elisa it runs and founded and came up with a concept and is doing an amazing job with Women's Golf Day. But Elisa put together and completely ran the 2002 EMC World Cup of Golf in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, she used to work for the PGA Tour. She's penned a number of books, and as many of you probably know, but a lot of you may not, so pay close attention to this episode, uh, Elisa founded Women's Golf Day. Women's Golf Day is is fantastic way for women to not just get into golf, but to be introduced the right way and stay in golf. It's a great day. Uh, I'm sure Elisa is going to get into the details, but it's some learning, it's some golfing, it's some socializing. It's a it's a fun, fun event each year coming the first Tuesday in June every year, I believe it is. And again, I'm sure Elisa is going to share the details, but we're excited to have her on. We are. I, I'm blown away. I've been following this event for a number of years and, you know, it started six, seven years ago. It's just, you know, a couple of local events at, at some local clubs. Did you know, Rob, it's now in 900 locations? 900. 68 which, countries. This is, well, 68 countries is really the crazy number there, I think. 900 yeah. locations is awesome. I, I mean, we at Gallus, we've been doing this for longer than her, 10 years, and we're only in we're less than 900 golf courses right now. Now it's a little different setup, of course, but, uh, but man, kudos to her and that the good news is there's a lot of room for growth. If you're listening to this, <laughs> and that's I mean, 900 just kind of like scratching, scratching the surface. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, so if you're a course operator, listen up. Cause she's got some, I thought some really insightful things about yeah. just pro shop setup, the, you know, the bathrooms, the retail assembly, just how to be more, inclusive or welcoming to, right. to women and they're a huge segment of the market and in the golf years. industry yeah re retention is key right now after such a big year more people of all kinds uh young old men women uh all different races more people got involved in golf than probably we've ever seen in one year i, I guess we got to go back to our buddy jim k and find out if that statement's true or not, or I'm just spreading <laughs> some fake news right now, but a lot of people got involved with the game and 2021 is a year of retention. So events like Elisa's are super key to continue to make sure you keep people included and retaining them as customers at your, at your golf facilities and golf businesses th this year. Of course, of course. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's jump right over into this week's episode no and, and welcome Elisa Godet to the show. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. We're, we're excited to have you on, actually. So we, you know, I, I, I mentioned to you in kind of our pre-show conversation, you know, I kind of feel like if you're in the golf industry, you've been living under a rock. If you don't know the impact that women in golf have had on the industry as a whole over the last few years, but there's no more of an expert in the golf industry on this than Elisa, our guest today. So Give us a little insight on how have impacted women the game uh, impacted how have women impacted the game over the last few years what um what do you see coming in the next couple of years and, and share just share a little bit just general information with us for 
those few that have been under that rock the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I don't have, you, you do this presentation, I don't have it on the tip of my fingers right now as far as the impact, at least women in general in the world, as far as economically, the trillions of dollars that it moves and things like that. And if anybody's interested, I could grab that information. But specifically in the golf industry, I don't know that I'm an expert, but, you know, we're six years into this. So we definitely have a lot of knowledge and I've, you know, we did a lot of studies before um, launching this. And those studies said that women were quick to enter or try golf, but equally as quick to leave. So they didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel welcome. It took too long. Um, they didn't have friends that did it. So, and we took all those things and flipped it on its head. What I've seen now is, I mean, because of the pandemic, golf has had an incredible surge and that's men and women, but there is data coming out that says that a lot more women have taken up golf since this pandemic started. That I, I don't, they have time on their hands. So the only things you can do to get out, maybe a lot of those barriers are, are down now um, that were there before. So um, that's it. You know, I mean, there, there, there is more golfing. I do realize though that from a business perspective, while the rounds are up, obviously the event portion of these golf facilities is not happening. So, um, but yeah, women are taking to it and they're liking it. I think it also has a lot to, I mean, there's a lot of factors. I think also just what's happening in the world, like where there's a big rah-rah right now on equality in every sense of the word. And I think that's playing into it too. Like there is a sense like, yeah, I can do it. A younger generation that doesn't have all those fear factors that the one before them had, I think all that yeah. plays into it. So one, one thing that you kind of hit on is, is a little bit of a, a um, hot topic in the golf industry right now, and that's inclusion. How can we make our facilities and the business be more inclusive? Um, and, and that's what you mentioned about quick to enter, but also quick to exit the the, the game. What ha like what successes have you seen? What have you seen courses do well to create some of that inclusion and maybe reduce that exit speed or eliminate it altogether? Um, what, well, our event obviously is a format that does that. So it's, you know, a four hour short format, only two hours of golfing, two hours of socializing. Um, I think if you take any of the things that they're saying, I mean, you're not going to change your whole business model, but let's back up one second. It is kind of crazy. If you think about it, like you wouldn't create a brand of sneakers and only sell them to men. Right. You know, it's like, why would you like, let's just talk sheer business. You wouldn't cut out 50% of your market share or not want, you know, half of the market share that's out there. So with that being said, you know, just the way it was and the way it's been perceived over the years, we kind of landed where we are. Um, I think the things that they can do is, we've heard it, but maybe, maybe some people haven't, is, you know, make them feel welcome, have, you know, some type of introductory, especially if it's a private club, you're trying to get them as members, make sure the you know, bathroom facilities are clean. And do you have some type of, you know, in a green grass, do you have some apparel and some things that um, that are speak to women or if they go in there and they don't see anything, you know, that they can purchase. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, then those are, those are all those kind of things, I think. And I think it's very, it's pretty simple too. You could, a lot of clubs have like a ladies league or a ladies day, not even a league, just like a ladies beginner or what have you. Um, could be mother daughter. There's so many mother son, mother child. You know things you could do just to come out because it's also kind of it kills two birds with one stone. Having childcare, um, any type of you know, only one person to be a babysitter in a room. I've seen a lot of places in Latin America, Argentina. They had a club where they have a full time babysitter there. I mean, they're just obviously really thinking with the family in mind. Right. Yeah. Right. I, um, when I, when I think about what you do in women's golf day and, and kind of thinking about, you know, the social aspects and everything, I'm sure there were some tough effects, you know, in the, in the 2020 women's golf day at facilities that were limited in some of that, from what I'm seeing, a lot of that's being lifted this year. So you mentioned your event, we'd love to talk about it. It is a big deal every year, but as you mentioned, it's not necessarily a, one day holiday type thing, but tell us about your event. Tell us about Women's Golf Day, what you've seen through the years and um, and this year coming coming up. 
Yeah, and if yeah, I could absolutely. just add before you get started, Elisa, is why don't you go back six, seven years to yeah. the genesis and tell us how you got the idea. And yeah, obviously there was a need, you, you filled it excellently and then and then how it's grown and, and what to look for in 2021. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, so, you know, I've been in the industry now for 20 years. And so six, in 2016, you know, kind of came up with this idea. And I think we weren't seeing women as economic influencers, first of all, that if you're gonna join a country club, have your children play golf, uh, buy a house, mm -hmm. you know, those are decisions, big ticket decisions yeah. that are usually not made alone. So just having the woman, you know, we're the only sport that has this uh, moniker, you know, golf widow, a negative moniker, I mean, just to eradicate that in and of itself would be a positive. So um, just so even if you don't end up being a golfer that you would want to have your children play, buy a house on a golf course or join a country club. Um, so partly that, and then a, a few people and myself, we've always been talking about what, what would it take? You know, we, we've heard over the years, we'd love to have more women, we'd like to have more women, but there wasn't an actionable plan. So this was an idea and we beta tested it basically by taking all the, the information, the data that had been out there, which was, it takes too long, women got turned off easily, they didn't feel welcome, um, it wasn't fun, it seemed very stiff and boring, all of that. And we came up with this four hour format. So the first two hours, women come and they have a choice of either taking lessons or playing nine holes. So it's new and existing golfers. If the three of us went to go take tennis lessons and we've never played tennis before, right. I don't think we're gonna be like, hey, let's go to Wimbledon. You know, and most times when you're trying something for the first time and you're in classes new, no matter what it is, the computer, you know, class, everybody else there is at the same level you are. So taking new golfers and existing golfers and merging them i think was a big game changer also the format that it's short for those two hours the people take the lessons the other people play the, the existing golfers play the nine holes and then they meet for two hours of socializing everybody does it on june uh, on the first tuesday in june this year's june 1st but the club the location decides if the event is public or private and if they charge a fee or they don't charge a fee so is their own micro business so we're empowering the clubs the, it's their people that are teaching they can charge or not they know what they want for their business model if they're looking to get new members generate new people if they're a muni a top golf a pj tour superstore they just want to drive traffic in or whatever and all of those people are doing it and so for a woman there's no like all that barrier of mystique or what have you you can just go walk into a pj tour superstore you know or top, but it's a lot less intimidating than a country club. And you could ask all the questions that you want. Like, well, if I was gonna go to a country club, what would I wear? Women are concerned about that. They don't wanna show up in the wrong outfit or the wrong stuff. What would I need? Do they rent clubs? You know, at least somebody can take them through. And they do that at a lot of these events. So the event then is that four hour experience. And um, you know, we beta tested it. It was very successful. We weren't thinking it was going to necessarily be a giant global thing. It was more North America in the first year. And we've done no advertising. Um, the first year was 416 locations in 28 countries. Wow. And now we're up to over 900 locations in 68 countries. And I always say, like, when you think about it, if we think of, like, golfing countries, you probably 15 you think of right off the bat. Right. 68 is a lot. We're Uganda, Saudi Arabia has had an event not in Morocco, you know, Argentina, we're going into Argentina and Japan this year for the first time. So I think what, what I hope, what, what, you know, what it turns out what we've done and this year I'm very conscious of is we're creating opportunity and unity. So it is a, you know, a community and you feel welcome and you feel appreciated. And I think that that's something that wasn't there for a while. And I think that's why it's resonated with a lot of women. And listen, don't get me wrong, men are involved in this to make it happen. You know, we try to do the, the women thing and like, you know, where by law, what have you, we're not discriminating, but it's that comfortability factor. But a lot of, obviously the people that run the golf clubs, that teach the classes, um, in the governing bodies and organizations that have gotten behind this, I mean, huge thank you. So this is an everybody thing. This is a smart business decision really for our industry. Right. Well, fantastic. Well, um, PGA Superstore you mentioned. 
there was some news recently. Yes. Uh, can you share that with us a little bit? What, what did you guys strike with yeah. the tour superstores? What, uh, how does that affect women's golf day? Yeah, it's going to be, it's great for women all in, in general, everybody. But um, so PGA Tour Superstore has come on as a partner sponsor and they did a multi-year deal and a multi-platform deal. So it's three years and it's also, um, they're going to have Women's Golf Day merchandise and work with our existing uh, sponsors. So we have, you know, Callaway is our sponsor for clubs and they launched a uh, club called the Reva, which they actually did research and development to come up with a club that's specifically designed for women. So that's, you know, and we're seeing this happening. So it's not just, you know, us talking about it. We're seeing tangible action being taken by whether it's big endemic golf companies or, or Fortune 500 or whomever is to really activate and, and realize that this is a market that, that is going to generate revenue for them. Um, Titleist for our golf balls, Foot Joy shoes, and uh, a head headwear, and they're creating a capsule collection, and that's going to be in um, for Mother's Day in May, and go through the time in all 46 of their stores, which is super exciting. Yeah. As well, we'll be activating with them throughout the year, not just all their stores host a Women's Golf Day event the first Tuesday in June this year, June 1st, but we're going to do some other things. And we're all co-brand. So whether they say, hey, come on, ladies, come on in for four weeks, beginner golf, come in every Tuesday and, you know, learn to putt, learn to chip each time. We're going to co-brand with them and help drive that and, and um, do as much as we can, you know, it's just to, to get more women feeling comfortable. Kyle? Yeah, so <laughs> 900, I'm just blown away with the figures you just shared with us. 900 yeah. locations, 68 countries, um, which still leaves thousands of courses that, that are participating. Yes. So if a local course is uh, no, getting involved, how? No. There it is. Yeah. A whole sheet of yeah. golf courses <laughs> and. How, how does somebody encourage their, their local course, whether it's country club or private, to participate if they aren't already uh, kind of signed on for June 1st? Yeah, Kyle, thank you for asking that because it, ironically, there are a lot of clubs that end up signing up because women or somebody goes into the pro shop or to the yeah. GM and says, hey, why don't we have this event? We want to have this event. And given the format that I told you, public, private, free, not free, it's their own micro business for the day. Um, we have Olympic Club, Valderrama, incredible club. Some of them do it as a member appreciation. Some of them have the members are allowed to invite a guest. Um, so they just go, they, on our website, the, there's two buttons. You can see it says find a location and register a location. And they're pretty prominent. And there's a couple places, but all that's all they have to do is the location has to go on and register their location. And then it can be found anywhere in the world. And as we all know, you never know where, people are coming from who they know and what have you at social media. I mean, I've had women that are here in America and say, Oh, you know, um, I was born in Poland, but I moved here when I was five and my sisters are there. And I saw you have four clubs in Poland. You know what I mean, so it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody who wants to go look, if you go to our website and where it says find a location, there's going to be like a Google map that comes up and, and you'll see like pockets. They'll say like 120 or, you know, 50 over here in Europe and, indicate so you get a kind of global idea of really where they are just cue obviously there's more locations in the united states because there's more golfers and more golf courses but you can see um you know the places they have so i encourage anybody to just womensgolfday.com tell your club or uh, your gm pro to go there and they can register the location it's really very easy and everything is turnkey the moment they sign up they get a digital media kit with all the assets that they would need um, to just you know, to do it and, and make it very, very simple for them. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely, it's womensgolfday.com and we'll definitely put uh, a link in the button and whatnot in the, in the show notes so people yep. can jump right over there. Yep. Any, anything new, different, expanded for 2021? I know 2020 obviously kind of wrinkled everybody's plans, but yeah, uh, I, you know, ironically, it was a lot of work. And it was very like, who moved my cheese? 
if you've ever read that book, like put your sneakers yep. on and let's all run. And like, yeah. if you didn't know technology, you definitely had to learn it this year, uh, or the 2020 year. But we actually, um, our June date, we moved to September and we had a digital day and we just asked our partners to give us a video. And in less than 30 days or about 30 days, we ended up with 52 videos. So in some regard, it was a lot of work and we had, you know, brought people on and editors and stuff, but we went from zero content to 50 phenomenal videos um, that help our, the people that we're reaching out to, you know, they're mm -hmm. engaging and empowering our pillars and supporting um, and stories also, I think, as we keep moving into this, I feel like, you know, what is our responsibility or what can we do to move the needle beyond just getting a woman out to the golf course? And some of that is showing that there's career paths for women. And whether that's seeing a Susie Whaley as a, you know, president of the PGA or Jan Beljan as a female architect that now is the president of the Architect Society. Um, obviously, Annika, who's a huge inspiration to all of us for what she's done and achieved. And um, we have videos from a young woman from the first T of Connecticut and how that's changed her life. So uh, those have, you know, those I think are good too, to show that not just, hey, golf is great. And the thing is we all talk to each other within the industry. We know how wonderful it is. We just gotta like, how do we get out to the mainstream and let everybody else know that it's wonderful or fun or you can connect with friends, or you can do it with your family. So, you know, even maybe a mother realizing she can do it with her kids and that this is a good thing. And with COVID, you know, what they've told me is the kids aren't, weren't able to play little league or um, basketball or some of these other sports. So it became. Yeah. Golf, 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 was it. Yeah, golf, <laughs> golf was it. It definitely has been an interesting now we say 13 months. It's not even the last year anymore. We have entered the second year of this crap for lack of a better way of putting it but uh but there is light at the end of the tunnel now i mean we have a regular women's golf day again in june this year regular events are going to be happening at most of the clubs i can't promise it for every club that you know they right. might have some local regulations or some pieces that they're involved that they have to adhere to but uh excited about it for sure this year um at least any parting shots anything as we head out no i mean i just hope that uh you know as many women and men uh, you know engage you know anyway that with golf of course but you know if even the men that's another um referring there or suggesting to their daughter sister wife girlfriend co-worker to go try it. This is an easy breezy format to do it. So I encourage everybody to do it. Oh, and, on, and we'll send you some info, but on um, May 25th, which is a week before Women's Golf Day, we're having a digital summit, some fun content um, that will be free for anybody to attend. So that'll be a really cool thing. I mean, our website will definitely have information on that, but I think people will really enjoy it, women and men, but yeah, so. Yeah, definitely send those along. We'll include those. And congratulations on all this success. It just uh, success. it seems to double every year. I mean, I've been tracking this for four or five years now, and it just gets bigger and bigger. So, yeah, this year we're entering Japan and Argentina for the first time. So that's kind of cool. And our website is in Japanese, French, and Spanish. So really, when we saw the Japanese, when that kind of like, <laughs> it, I was like, wow, okay. We're really really international like now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was kind of, it, was very, it was very cool. It was a very like surreal moment for a second, but it makes me happy. I mean, there's like, you know, look at all that. We have these Japanese, we already have a couple of courses signed up. It's a month before the Olympics, you know, touch wood that we have yeah. an Olympics. Yeah. But so, yeah, so we're positioning ourselves to like, you know, shine as much light. And I, as I say, and I'm going to say it again, this is like, Feel like we're the consummate Jerry Maguire. Yeah, this is help yeah. me help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> help me help you because ours is just a one day thing. You know, this is we don't have a learn to play golf the women's golf day way. We want you, we want to encourage them to take lessons with a PGA or an LPGA teaching pro. And you know, it really is. It's it's our livelihood that we're, you know, just growth. Like I said, you're not going to sell sneakers to only 50% of the population. Yep. Well, you've built something you should be very proud of. Uh, this should be pretty gratifying. You've had a real impact on the industry, the game, a lot of people, 
Um, so congratulations on that. You know, keep it up. Thank you. I, I think what you're doing is, is really great. It was great having Elisa on the show today. And, thank you. Uh, yeah. And I want to thank you guys too, because you sharing the message is huge because we don't do any advertising and it's, it's <laughs> the word out. And, you know, and I do want to say, you know, this is the first that starting last year that we really had, you know, big sponsors come on and I can't thank them enough because we all know how this industry works too. And it's like, Titleist, Fortjoy, Callaway, PGA Tour Superstore ahead, putting their weight behind this is, you know, moves the ball that much more forward and all of there. Like I said, Jerry Maguire, help me help you. Yeah, it's a, it's a who's who of retailers have signed on. Good. Well, again, on behalf of uh, the Golf Industry Roundtable, we appreciate you taking a seat at the table with us today. Thank you very much for having me at the table. Thanks, Elisa. Okay, thank you. Thank you.